Grace is simply getting something really good that you don't deserve. In other words, it's like Christmas time, right? You you see all these gifts under the tree. Did, did you do anything to earn those? I mean, yeah, some people say like Santa Claus is watching his list. He's watching you and making sure you're the, he's got the naughty and nice list, right? But that's not how God works. God doesn't work that way. This is a free gift. The word grace in the Greek was actually charis, which is where we get the word charity. And it's just a free gift ready and available to all, to any who would receive it. And that is what the good news is all about, the gospel, which means the good news about Jesus Christ. Yeshua Mashiach, if you're my friends in Israel, whom I love very much, love you guys, and my American and and other watchers you know, from all over the world, some in South Africa, some in Brazil, some in Hong Kong. It's amazing how the internet does that and YouTube channel is amazing that way. And I, I would imagine some people are really against this kind of thing. And I've heard the criticisms, right? But can you imagine Paul, the Apostle Paul, if he had all the social media platforms that we have today? He would be using it, right? He would totally, he'd be all over it because he's going to use everything he has, everything available to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Why would you not do that? The good news, it's like having the cure to cancer or the cure to death, which it is. It's the cure to death and we have it because when you die, you don't really die. If you belong to Jesus Christ, if you've been transformed by him, and born again, because you have to be born twice. You're born once in the flesh, and then you have to be born in the spirit to belong to God through Jesus Christ. And that's what happens when you're born again. All right, you guys. Hey, my name is George Crabb. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to consider subscribing. We do the whole Bible. We use the whole counsel of God holistically, the entire Bible, the Old Testament. If you're in Israel, right, it's your Tanakh which is the the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It's the prophets and the writings. That's how you guys have them organized. And that's how Jesus taught through them. If you read Luke chapter 24, he put it in that order amazingly, right? Because the Bible is a very Jewish book, and you're going to see that in our study here in the book of Romans. So welcome, you guys. Hey, let's get into it. Romans chapter 1, It's Paul gives us the whole picture of what the good news looks like And I'm so excited about this. I hope you are too. (laughs) All right, guys. So here we go. So here it is, the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, we're going to look at that right now, you guys. So here we go. Romans chapter 1, and I want to go here first in verse 16 because it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. So who said that? Paul said that. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He was a very Jewish man, strongly religious Jewish. In fact, he was one of he was being brought up to be one of the great Pharisees. Uh, you know, one of the religious leaders, the Pharisees, in the temple. He was trained by Gamil, which is one of the, in that time, one of the greatest scribes and Pharisees of that time. And he was brought up and mentored by him. So he was, he was the Jewish man of all Jewish men. He was awesome in that respect and well-respected, but he did not like Christianity at first. He thought that was in opposition to the religion, right? But then his eyes were open because he had an encounter with Jesus, with Yeshua Mashiach himself on the road to Damascus. It was very powerful and it transformed him. And that's what the gospel does. It transforms us. And later in Romans, you're going to see that, that word transformed. In Romans chapter 12, it says, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, it's not just your mind, but your soul and your spirit being renewed by God, born again in the spirit, you guys. It's like a you're a sailboat. Imagine that. Your vessel, the outer shell, your body is the vessel, right? The actual sailboat physically. But the, the spirit is like the sail, which is bound up and not being used. It's not alive, Right. And you, yourself, your will, your your mind, your soul, you're the captain of that ship. You're steering it, right? 
But if you decide to give it over to God, give yourself over to God to be born again, that sail opens up, your spirit opens up, and God's breath, his ruach, right, in the Greek or in the Hebrew, which means a spirit, breathes in the ruach. He breathes in his spirit, the Holy Spirit. He, the person of the Holy Spirit, breathes it. He comes into your life, fills your sail, your spirit, and he's pushing you towards heaven. Pretty amazing, right? That's what being transformed is about. Also, the Greek word transformed is uh, metamorphosis, is where we get the word metamorphosis, which is like a, a caterpillar that's crawling around in the dirt and on the ground, right? But then it goes into the cocoon, right? And then it, be, and it bursts open from that cocoon and becomes this beautiful butterfly, right? Wings, able to fly around. And that is also the picture of being transformed by the renewing of your mind, being transformed, that metamorphosis, that thing that happens that makes that beautiful butterfly which flies around. And that's what we are as born-again Christians. Now, we're still dragging around that cocoon with us sometimes, and that's our flesh, right, which still drags us down, but it's not going to stop us. Eventually, that's going to break off whether we die or Jesus comes back and we're raised up and caught up into the air to be with him forever in heaven, we are born again of the Spirit. And we have a promise, which is grace, right? A promise to live forever and ever with him in paradise. Wow. (laughs) That's That's the good news. That's why Paul, here he says, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why would he be? Nobody should be ashamed of the gospel. Gospel just means good news, guys. For it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, right? And that's the word right there the Bible used, believes. And that's how you get to be saved. That's the starting point right there is to believe. So it's the power of God, the power. And here I have a painting of a bridge over this beautiful waterfall. This bridge, that's what the gospel is. It's the bridge to God, right? So it's to the Jew first. Remember, Paul always taught to the Jewish people first, and that's what God wanted them to do, and also to the Greek, which also could be Gentiles. That was the meaning of that. So here it is, guys. So here we are. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to get into it right now, and we're going to go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. It's so important to do teachings like that. I do topical teachings too, which are important as well, but we want to make sure that we go chapter by chapter, verse by verse, so we have the context. In fact, we want the context of the entire Bible, all of the scriptures, because they explain the scriptures. So I just did a series in Revelation, and if you take stories like Joseph and Moses, which were types of Jesus, you could actually plug those into the even the story of uh, the Revelation, the book of Revelation, and understand it. Because both of them had a Gentile bride. Both of them were rejected by their own at first, had a Gentile bride. They come back to save Israel, right? During a time of great trouble, there was the same plagues, all these different things. Joseph, during that time of great trouble, saves all of Israel. It was a seven-year famine, kind of like the seven-year tribulation, right? The Bible explains the Bible, you guys. It is so good. I love that. Okay. Let's continue in the scriptures here. And Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus. Remember the word Christ is the Greek for Messiah. Jesus is just the Greek for Yeshua if you're in Israel or for Joshua if you want to speak English uh, in that. So called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of Christ. God. So an apostle is actually someone who is set apart, and it's actually somebody in the context of those days, an apostle was somebody who actually physically saw Jesus. And Paul was a special of the 12 who saw Jesus. And it's amazing because if you take Joseph's story, it's 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 really, it's interesting because Paul, he's the only one who tells which tribe he's from. He's an apostle of the 12. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. Very interesting because if you use Joseph's story again, right, there were the, uh, the the ten brothers who rejected and despised him at first, but then, and then Joseph being the eleventh brother, the missing link, right, <laughs> kind of like Jesus, the Yeshua Mashiach, right, he's that missing link who was despised and rejected by his brothers and cast out, and they thought he was long gone out of their lives, right, but then later they realize he's alive <laughs> and they repent. They, they ask for his, beg for his mercy and forgiveness. He's like, don't be afraid. I am Joseph, your brother. God meant for this to happen, to save many alive as it is today, just like Jesus will do someday. But he had a little brother named Benjamin. 
And he gave Benjamin twice the blessing as the other brothers, right? Well, Paul says he's from the tribe of Benjamin and he fulfills the 12 tribes of Israel, right? There's, there's actually Jesus does because, you know, Joseph being a type of Jesus was the 11th and then, then Paul, or you could say Benjamin, right? Benjamin, he was that 12th brother who was the full-blooded bloodline brother of Joseph, which is an interesting picture because Paul said he was of the tribe of Benjamin. There's some interesting stuff there, right? So the Bible explains the Bible, guys, again. That's what, what it's about here. So let's continue. An apostle, someone who was set apart for the gospel. And here we go. Which he promised beforehand through his prophets, like Isaiah, right? Isaiah 53, Isaiah 7, all these different places, Psalm 22, in the Holy Scriptures. Those are the Old Testament scriptures, guys. In Luke chapter 24, Jesus did that. He, he took those two men onto that road to Emmaus and he brought them through the entire books of Moses. All of the Old Testament showed him where he was found. Then later he does the same thing with the apostles. At the end of Luke chapter 24, he did it in that order of the Tanakh today. If you're in Israel, right? He went through the books of Moses and then it says through the prophets and the Psalms, showing them where he was found. He opened their eyes. And I pray he opens your eyes too and mine so we could all see that. And then verse 3 in Romans 1, concerning his son who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh. So he was a descendant of David. We know that through the line of Mary. Now Joseph, his he wasn't really his father, but he was Mary's husband. He was also of the tribe of Judah, fulfilling everything, but he was through the line of Solomon, okay? Now, Mary was through the line of Nathan, David's son Nathan, which was great because we know that there was a, a cursing or, or that the line couldn't go through Solomon, that it had to go through the line of of Nathan through David, right? And that's what we see in Mary's genealogy. If you want to check that out, especially my Jewish friends, you guys in Israel, take a look at the book of Matthew, a very Jewish book. He goes through the genealogies in the beginning, and you can study that. It's an amazing thing. It's really cool. I, I love it. All right. So he was a descendant of David according to the flesh, which fulfills him being the Messiah. That was very important and he was also born in Bethlehem, later raised in Nazareth. They call him Jesus of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem, just like all the approved lambs that were used for the sacrifice in the temple from that day. They were from the hills of Bethlehem. Those were the only approved lambs. Do a research on that and check it out if you want. So John chapter 1, verse 14, talks about Jesus here. He says, And the Word became flesh, and he dwelt, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. <laughs> oh, wow. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. Not just truth, not just grace, but grace and truth. Very important, you guys. Who was declared the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Or if you're in Israel, Yeshua Mashiach. Right? Yeshua Mashiach, our Lord, Yahweh, the Lord. And he was raised with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. He is alive today, you guys. He was raised from the dead after he died on that cross. Three days later, he was raised from the dead. And that gives us great hope as believers in Yeshua, Mashiach, or Jesus Christ, because this is what gives us great hope because we know we will be raised from the dead too, that we will not stay in that grave and rot and then go to hell, which is a real place. And Jesus did talk about hell. It's a place of torment and burning and darkness. He saved us from that. He is that bridge, the gospel, the good news. He is that bridge that brings us to God. The only way is through Jesus. There's no other way. He said it. And you could be saved. You, you could, if you're feeling a conviction, a, a, a holiness, a, a sorrow, a godly sorrow in your heart, then you could pray a prayer at the end of this episode to be transformed by the renewing of your mind from the gospel, you guys. Be transformed in your spirit as well. Born again in Jesus Christ. You can do that at the end of this episode. I'll lead you in a prayer if you feel that conviction. Be, you must be real. and This must be a prayer from your heart to be a new person in Jesus, starting a walk with him. All right? All right. So 
And the first thing you have to know is the bad news. The bad news is you're a sinner. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us, even believers sin, but we're covered by the blood of the lamb, by Jesus and his righteousness. We're covered in him. He speaks up for us in front of the father. He's one of mine, he would say, or she's one of mine. And then you realize that this is the gospel. This is the good news that he has paid for our sins. Those sins had to be paid for. Otherwise, you go to hell. Without him, you're going to hell. Simple as that. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. All right, you guys. So with power, according to the Spirit, he was raised from the dead. That's what gives us great hope. (laughs) We get to live forever with Jesus. Death has no sting on us. That's what Paul wrote. There's no sting in death for us, you guys. We will, to be absent with this body, I will be present with the Lord. And if he comes back, this body will be raised up into the air to be with the Lord. And the dead in Christ, their bodies will be raised up to have new bodies, new bodies that are incorruptible like Jesus's forever. That's grace. You're getting something really good that you don't deserve. I don't deserve it either. And I I willingly accept it. I'm getting the good deal. God's not, but I'll take that good deal. It's a great deal. I had this uh, this black uh, drill sergeant in the army. I loved him. And he used to always say, he'd lead us on these really long runs. I was in the elite group that ran really fast. And gosh, I don't know how I did that, but I made it. But anyway, he was awesome. And he would say, all right, guys, that's a good deal. He goes, no, that's a great deal. I love that, man. He he was a ranger himself. Ranger tab, went through the school and all that. Really awesome guy. All right, let's get back into it, guys. Here we go. All right, so through whom we have received grace. Did you earn it? No, you received it. The free gift of God. Grace. Amazing grace. This is what this book is about, you guys. It is about the gospel of grace. That's what the book of Romans shows us. And it is so freeing. It is so enlightening and transforming when you go through the book of Romans. In fact, a lot of the spiritual revivals in church history were brought about from somebody reading the book of Romans. Isn't that amazing? In fact, Chuck Smith, I was brought up in that Jesus movement uh, in the 1970s. There's a movie coming out, by the way, called The Jesus Revolution. I was a part of that. My parents were a part of that. And it's based on Greg Laurie and Kathy Laurie. Um, He's a pastor now. You guys probably heard of him, but uh, it's about him and Chuck Smith, the guy that started this little, he was a, the, the founding pastor of Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, California, and this man named Lonnie Frisbee who led Greg Laurie to Christ. And it was about these hippies, and my parents were one of those hippies. They were drug addicts, and Jesus poured into, the, there was this Holy Spirit movement in that time on the coast of California that I cannot even describe to you. It was so amazing, you guys, and I hope we have another revival in our country again. We need one. And I remember as even a four-year-old boy feeling the presence of God and his love and his peace so powerfully, I knew it was him at four years old. He was in the air, thick and there as my parents worshiped those, those nights on Friday nights and, and those mornings on Sunday mornings. It was just an amazing time. All right, so let's pray for revival, you guys. We need one desperately in our world today. All right, so here we go. Grace. Grace, amazing grace. One of the most powerful songs ever, by the way. Amazing grace. And apostleship, okay? Well, let's go back for context here. Okay, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles in behalf of his name, among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ, to all who are beloved by of God in Rome, called as his saints. So the grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, you guys. Hey, if you have not received Jesus, you, my friend, you can receive him right now through this simple prayer. But it is a prayer from your heart. First, you have to understand that you are a sinner. I'm a sinner, and we need Jesus. There's just no other way you have to come through him. And if you feel that conviction in your heart and you'd like to receive him and give your life over to him to be born again, to be transformed, you could say this prayer after me from your heart. 
All right, you're going to repeat these words after me, and you're praying to God, and not to me, not to anybody around you. This is you and God, business between you and God. If that's in your heart, if you'd like to do that, my friend, repeat these words after me, all right? Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he is alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward, this moment forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome, you guys, to the family of God. Make sure you're plugged into a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, and make sure, or fellowship, if you're in Israel, go to One for Israel. That's a great ministry. Make sure, you guys, that you are praying every day and you're reading your Bible, the Word of God, every day. Okay? Talk to Him. He's your friend. Follow Him. Listen to Him. Let Him transform your life. All right? God bless you. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.